Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're redoing the problem as promised, um, problem 2.43 on um, statics and the idea here is that we're going to solve it in a different way and you guys can choose however you feel uh, how that's easier for you to be able to solve it. Uh, we're not going to use a law of science this time, we're just going to use uh, energy, uh, sorry, uh, force decomposition. Um, and the problem statement, once again, reads like so. Two cables are tied together at C and are loaded as shown. Determine the tension in cable AC and in cable BC. So the idea is we have this cable pulling it down and for it not, because it's still not moving, right? Then there should be two components here making it stop. Um, and because it's not moving, we can be sure that the 400 newtons pointing downwards is being counterbalanced by 400 newtons pointing upwards. But this 400 newtons is split, is split between these two tensions here, tension AC and tension uh, BC, right? So what we can do is the following. I'm going to do my 400, um, actually, I'm going to just draw my tension AC here, and I'm going to note this is 50, keep saying it's 30, 50 as per the problem. Okay, so that means that if I project this in two ways, let me do a bit bigger, like so. If I want to project it in two ways, it will be going leftwards on the horizontal axis and upwards on the y-axis. Right, and to be able to do that decomposition, what I do is the sine of 50, which I know will be the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is the whole thing. So that means that the sine of 50 will be equal to the y component of TAC. So we want to call this TY, so it's not TAC, well actually, I call it ACY. And here we're going to call it ACX. And the sine of 50 has to be equal to my ACY divided by the actual T, E, C. Okay, what about the other component? What about this guy here? Well, that's going to be the cosine, right? Because the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So therefore, the cosine, cosine of 50 will be equal to my A, C, X divided by my T, A, C. All right, what about the other one? The other one is pointing like so. That's what we're calling T, B, C, and again it will have two decompositions, right? One that is also pointing upwards and that is sharing the load with um, A, C, Y, and I'm going to call this B, C, Y, and obviously one pointing on the other direction, on the opposite direction, and this is what we're going to call B, C, X. And once again, the sign of well, the angle now changes, right? Let's just, let's just do the angle here. This is 30 over here. So a sine of 30 will be equal to my BCY divided by the real thing, TBC, and the cosine of 30 will be equal to my PBCX divided by my TBC. All right, cool. So we have two many unknowns, four equations and two many unknowns. But we know a couple more things. What do we know? We know that if this is balanced, like we said before, if this is balanced, we can say the sum of forces on the y-axis is zero, according to our good Uncle Newton, right? So if Uncle Newton said it's zero, what are the forces that we have? We have um, T, so ACY pointing upwards plus um, BCY pointing or upwards minus 400 newtons pointing downwards. And this has to be zero. So therefore, ACY plus BCY has to be equal to 400. So this gives us yet another equation. What else do we know? This guy is not only not moving on the Y axis, but it's not also not moving on the x-axis, right? So that means that the x-axis also has to be zero. So I can copy paste this idea here into the 
x-axis it also has to be zero but here only have two forces acting on the y axis on the x axis BC X and ACX. And therefore, because they're pointing in different directions, I can say BCX minus ACX has to be equal to zero. And therefore, BCX equals ACX. And with that, it's like a magic trick. I now created additional equations that I can solve this with. So note that I now have plenty of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I only have, um, I mean, it knows I have like six, two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, six equations, six on those. So now is the, the fun part that we need to put this all together. Um, let's see where I want to start. I'm going to start by noting that Let's do this one at a time. I'm going to start using this guy here. Okay, let's do it. I'm going to get some rule lines going too. Okay. All right, so I'm going to note that if my cosine of 50 equals my C-A-Y divided by my T, um, C-A, then that means that cosine of 50 times T C A equals C A Y. Okay. C A X, sorry. C A X. And if C A X equals C B X, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to speed up this up on the video, or else it's going to be too, too slow. All right, let's do this. Okay, and obviously if this is true, then we had the other equation relating um, the TCA, or is our TCA, uh, right here, we have cosine, this one here, I have the two cosines, this one here, TCA and TCB, we can get this one here, if this is true, and this is true, then that means that my TCA will just be my cosine of 30 divided by my cosine of 50 times my TCB, which now I know it's 261, so therefore if I don't do any, um, if I don't um, approximate, I get 351 points. If I don't approximate this value here, then I get this value here out of it, Newton's. Okay, and therefore, obviously, we match the numbers we had before. Um, when we did it the, the other way with the law of signs, we get the same result, but obviously, it takes us a little longer. So, I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave it down below in the comment section. Um, hopefully, you will appreciate how easier it is to do it with the law of signs, but obviously, this is another way to do it too. You just have additional equations and more places to go wrong. So, Definitely don't recommend if you're doing this on a regular basis. But, however, if you're only doing it every once in a while because you're doing you know, a very advanced problem that we need to go back on this, then by all means, this is one way to do it. Um, just make sure that you do one step at a time so you don't get uh, confused on your math. All right, other than that, I um, hope this was useful. If it was, consider giving this video a like. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below in the comment section, and I'll be sure to address it. And we'll talk soon.